Hello, my name is Anjali Talreja and I'll be talking about mental health awareness and emotions. Mental health is well-being of your emotions and thoughts. Your emotions are your feelings such as uh, happiness, fear, guilt, shame, compassion. The list is quite long actually. The outward expression of these emotions uh, will be seen in your behavior or observed in your behavior. Uh, now sometimes the environment may not be conducive for expression of these emotions. For example, when a small child is crying, he is made to stop or she is made to stop. They are crying because he or she is hurt. In case of a boy child, we say, stop crying like a girl. Thus, we are shaming or the society is shaming the boy child for expressing the feeling of hurt. In case of a girl child, we say, you need to be strong, you cannot show your weakness. Thus as a society again, we are telling the girl child that she cannot show her feeling of hurt, which is implied by showing her weakness or said by showing her weakness. Now when these children grow up and over the years, what happens is that they don't know what they want in life in general or what they are aiming for because what has happened is over the years they have learned to suppress some feelings and certain uh, thoughts because the society was not conducive enough or the environment was not conducive enough because they have been learning that the society will tell them what to feel what not to feel what to think what not to think how to behave and how not to behave. So now, the society expecting them to know what they want in future as adults is quite unfair, I believe. Further, they are also called as confused. It is not because of the lack of opportunities or because the overabundance of opportunities that they don't know that what they want. It is because the society has not let them express their feelings and emotions and thoughts and, the, and they have learned that the society will tell them what to do. Then they, then they are clearly lost and the society gives them the label of confused. I believe it's quite unfair to expect that. Further, now coming to society, the society does not have the palate or is not conducive enough for expression of weakness or vulnerability. These emotions which uh, mark or on the or or uh, surface or show the you know underlining of uh, vulnerability or weakness are the so-called negative emotions while others obviously fall under the positive emotions. Uh, I believe that the connotation of positive and negative should be dropped because uh, there is obviously then a preference uh, of, you know, uh, choosing uh, a certain type of emotions over the other. We are one whole being. By choosing one certain type of emotions over the other, we are suppressing certain emotions which is clearly not healthy. We have all the emotions. We are one beautiful being. We might have, some of us might have more of compassion. Some of us might have more of sadness. Some of us might have more of anger. And that's fine. And that's okay. All of it can be dealt with. Now what happens to these individuals as adults or when they realize that, you know, we don't know where what do we want or what to do or this is a problematic issue that we are facing. Where do they go? What to do? Obviously we have, you know, we have been reading a lot of newspapers or a lot of blogs which uh, are specifically written on mental health for awareness purposes, obviously. What happens when we Google? Certain terms and certain uh, you know, labels, or should I say disorders, 
have clear markation have certain cutoffs for which for which the normal uh, population is, does not know how to function or you as a client might know or uh, might not know how to go about it because therapists or the mental health professionals are trained specifically in so i would request you to not google or even if you do you take them to the mental health professional and ask them the see i read and clear it out that you know see i read about this i would like to know more about this i'm sure they would be quite receptive to explaining as what they are and what and how are things going on with you specifically now the mental health professional field consists of two major uh, forces that is the psychiatrists and the psychologists the role of a psychiatrist is to prescribe medication and not talk therapy the role of a psychologist is majorly talk therapy and only and only talk therapy during the entire therapeutic intervention what happens is that if the therapy or the talk therapy is not making progress the therapist will recommend you to consult a psychiatrist for medicine for medicine intervention so that the talk therapy can make complete progress that does not mean that once you are taking medication work is over your emotions need not to be addressed no emotions need to be addressed because that's where everything began from further when you are coming in for therapy and during the earlier 1 uh, 2 3 sessions when you are uh, coming in you might have certain set of concerns that you're coming in and while talking to the therapist you might feel that oh these are two three more set of concerns that i would wish to address these are called goals the goals clearly are not uh, you know forced by the therapist it's a mutual understanding between the client and the therapist they are set as per the mutual understanding further sometimes during this intervention uh, session of taking a number of sessions that is told to you by the therapist that would be taken certain form of worksheets or maintaining a log or doing some small of activity at home would be given this is because uh, the uh, the entire uh, you know journey of self introspection need to also begin because the idea of therapy is independence giving you the charge you cannot come in with therapy for years and the therapist cannot see you for years yes you can come in for goals later for certain issues that might have been uh, uh, you know which might crop up later but uh, clearly it's not dependency it's to make you independent the mutual goals and everything and you know this entire process is to begin a journey so that you uh, start exploring your life yourself your emotions by starting off or in the beginning in a very non judgmental and an understanding environment this understanding the uh, the word for an understanding environment is also called empathetic environment and this this is what therapy gives you this is what therapy is all about so the therapist does not judge you it's an empathetic environment for you to explore and express all of these emotions father so during this course of therapy and you know when when you're beginning therapy there is obviously a contract which is made that is certain rules a uh, certain uh, you know uh, agreement is done that okay you know you need to inform uh, at certain time when you cannot come in for therapy and it's a, it's a list but one of the most important ones is confidentiality which i would like to talk about confidentiality means uh, the therapist will not be discussing your case uh, with anyone um, that means confidentiality will be maintained and the talking uh, the all your issues and everything else will be only discussed whenever the next session is scheduled or during the session
therapist does do a lot of work coming from um you know uh planning of your sessions setting of goals uh taking entire history you know from where you start from from your most earliest memories till date so if it's a 40 year old person from your earliest memories to the 40 till till the time you have reached your age all of it is asked all of it is kind of you know picked in terms of to help you to address your goals for you to have a fulfilling and an optimal living therefore i believe the fees that is charged by a therapist is quite minimal not much which has been a very reportedly concerned by the clients it's not just talking it's a lot of effort from the therapist the other part that i would like to address is uh, the stigma attached for coming into help or coming for therapy i think it is clearly one's own decision that uh, the certain concerns need to be addressed and talking to people whom you have admired or your friends or in the society has not worked till now so i guess one should give themselves a chance over the society because nothing has been working give yourself the chance to express and one would just not you know uh, concern themselves with what the society says especially while coming with this i do hope that uh, people who feel the need to come in for help do come in there is help there and uh, i hope that i have made a very small impact uh, in terms of awareness even if it's uh, very very small even if it's 0.05% i hope that uh, everyone would one day choose their mental health uh, over stigma over fears would choose themselves thank you and uh, i hope uh, you do turn it to therapy and awareness